Hey guys, welcome back to Read With Me, LG. We are kicking off a fall, Thanksgiving, uh, any of those kinds of stories. So we have about 10 books over the next couple weeks and we're gonna cover Thanksgiving and fall, okay? So the first one up is Berenstain Bears, Give Thanks. And if you've been watching this channel at all, you know that I do love Berenstain Bears and you guys seem to enjoy them too. Um, but this one I've actually never read before. So usually um, the original Berenstein Bears books are written by Stan and Jan Berenstein, who were a married couple. After Mr. Stan passed away, we now have Jan and Mike. And Mike is the son of Jan and Stan Berenstein. So this is Jan and her son working together to write this book, so I think this is special and fun. And this is called The Berenstain Bears Give Thanks. It'll be my first time reading this one too, so I hope you like it, okay? All right. So, Berenstain Bears Give Thanks, here we go. They're in the woods. It was autumn in bear country, and the sights and the sounds of the season were all around. The leaves on the trees were turning orange, red, and gold. There was a nip in the air, and the sky was a brilliant blue. Flocks of geese flew overhead, honking their way south for the winter. Out in his cornfield, Farmer Ben was up on his big red tractor, harvesting his crop. Papa, brother, and sister bear waved to him as they drove up the long drive to the farm. Papa was delivering some new furniture for Mrs. Ben, it was a fine new kitchen table and chairs. Ben climbed down from his tractor and went to meet them at the farmhouse. Papa and the cubs unloaded the table and chairs and carried them inside. Mrs. Ben was pleased. My, don't they look nice, she said. It brightens the place up a bit. They do make my curtains look a mite shabby, though. I guess it's time I made some new ones. Thank you, Papa Bear, said Ben, shaking hands. A job well done. Now about our little deal. The cubs wondered what deal Ben was talking about. I told you that you could have the pick of my produce and payment for the furniture, said Ben. That's right, Ben, said Papa as he nodded. I was thinking of a few cases of your extra special grade A apple blossom honey. Papa licked his lips just thinking about all the delicious honey. That's fine, agreed Ben. You're welcome to it. And I have something else behind the barn that I think might interest you. Meet Plymouth, said Ben. My Tom Turkey. Isn't he a beaut? Plymouth was indeed a magnificent bird. He was enormous with a huge fanned tail and glowing colors of black, red, and gold. Wow, said Papa, impressed. That's some turkey. He's beautiful, said Sister. But why is he called Plymouth? History says that Plymouth is the place where the pilgrim bears first set foot in this great land, explained Ben, and the first Thanksgiving feast was eaten right there in Plymouth, too, after their harvest. I couldn't think of a better name for a turkey. So here they are. There is Plymouth. Plymouth the turkey, right there. He sure is a fine bird, said Papa, but what's he got to do with my furniture? He's yours if you want him, said Ben. He'll make you the best Thanksgiving dinner in all of bear country. Papa's eyes brightened. Roast turkey, mmm. Thanksgiving dinner, said Sister, getting upset. But that means... Now, you don't fret, Sister Bear, soothed Ben. Plymouth can stay here till Thanksgiving. I'll fatten him up and deliver him all ready for your mama to cook on Thanksgiving morning. What do you say, Papa? Is it a deal? It's a deal, Ben, said Papa, and they shook hands on it. Papa was already imagining mouth-watering Thanksgiving turkey, Thanksgiving dinner, roast turkey with stuffing, two kinds of potatoes, gravy, green beans, and squash, then dessert. 
pumpkin pie with whipped cream and maybe some ice cream on top. Yum! But Sister Bear wasn't so sure she liked the sound of all of this. She had never met her Thanksgiving dinner before. It made things more personal. And Plymouth was such a beautiful bird. She liked him a lot. So here's Papa imagining one thing. And here's Sister Bear saying, I kind of like him. You know, Papa, she said as they drove home, I don't think having Plymouth for Thanksgiving dinner is such a good idea. I think we should, he would make a nice pet. A pet? asked Papa in surprise. Who ever heard of a turkey as a pet? Why not? asked Sister. Lots of cubs have unusual pets. Barry Brune has a raccoon. Lizzie Brune has a goat. And Too Tall Grizzly has a snake. Why couldn't I have a turkey? Papa thought of that roast turkey, roast Thanksgiving turkey, with all the trimmings. Turkeys just don't make good pets, he said, and that's all there is to it. But Sister still didn't like the idea of Plymouth being a Thanksgiving dinner. The weeks went past and the leaves fell from the trees. The wind grew positively chilly and one day a few flakes of snow fell. Thanksgiving was drawing near. Every day sister visited Plymouth at the farm. He was growing fatter and fatter. His feathers were bright and glossy. When he spread his tail he looked like a big red, black red gold peacock. But the closer it got to Thanksgiving, the sadder sister got. She liked Plymouth more and more every day. Mama noticed that Sister was down in the dumps. You know, Sister, said Mama, putting her arm around her shoulder. Papa's right. Turkeys don't make very good pets. They aren't like dogs or cats. You can't play with them or run and jump with them. They're really just farm animals. I know, Sister sighed, but I like Plymouth. He's so pretty. Mama grew thoughtful. She saw that Sister was really serious about this. Now, dear, don't worry about it, she said. Papa and I will talk it over, and I'm sure we can work out something. Sister brightened up. Really? She said. You mean we won't have Plymouth for Thanksgiving dinner? We shall see what we shall see, Mama said, smiling. And in the meantime, I have a surprise for you. I've been thinking we should make this Thanksgiving into something extra special. Grizzly Gramps and Gran, Uncle Wilbur, Aunt Min, and Cousin Fred will be coming over for dinner. I thought we could put on a show for them. A show? asked Sister, looking excited. She loved putting on a show. What kind of show? I thought the story of the first Thanksgiving would be appropriate, said Mama. It could tell all about how pilgrim bears and the native bears celebrated the first Thanksgiving together hundreds of years ago. Neat, said Sister. Will we have costumes? Of course, said Mama. We can make them ourselves. I have lots of old fabric we can use, but we'll need feathers for the native bears' headdresses. Plymouth dropped lots of tail feathers. And Sister... Oh, Plymouth dropped lots of tail feathers, said Sister. They are perfect. I've been saving them. She ran upstairs to get her collection of turkey tail feathers. She brought them down to Mama's sewing room. Mama had the pea book from the bear encyclopedia open to pilgrim bears so she could see what their clothes looked like. You're right, dear, said Mama, taking the feathers. These are perfect. But do you know what else we'll need? Sister shook her head. We need a script for the play, said Mama. Why don't you write one? Me? Certainly, said Mama, getting out her fabric and spreading it out. You know the story of the first Thanksgiving, don't you? I guess so, said Sister. She had heard about it in school over and over again every November. She should know it pretty well by now. Well, there you are, mumbled Mama, her mouth full of pens as she started work. So Sister got out a pad of paper and pencil and set to work. It was hard. She had never written a play before. She asked Brother for help. Sister wrote the script, and Brother copied the parts for each player. 
Sister was so busy working on the play that she forgot all about Plymouth the turkey for a while. There they are. Trying to figure it out. When Thanksgiving Day finally arrived, everything was ready. The script was written and copied. Mama had sewn beautiful pilgrim bear and native bear costumes, and the treehouse was full of the wonderful smells of Thanksgiving dinner. Around 2 o'clock, Grizzly Gramps and Gran, Uncle Wilbur, Aunt Min, and Cousin Fred arrived. Sister and Bear grabbed Fred and took him up to their room to rehearse. Fred had a part in the play, too. An hour later, just before dinner time, Sister made an appearance on the landing of the stairs. She was dressed as the Pilgrim Bear and Maiden. May I have your attention, please, she called. The grown-ups all turned toward her. Oh, isn't she darling, said Aunt Min. Sister did look very cute in her Pilgrim Bear and Maiden hat. We will now present the story of the first Thanksgiving, she announced. The grown-ups all applauded and found their seats to watch the play. So there's Sister Bear. The Pilgrim Bears lived in the old country. They wanted to worship God in the way they believed was right, but the rulers of the old country would not let them do this. The Pilgrim Bears decided to leave their home and seek a new land where they could worship in freedom. I am a pilgrim bear. I am going on a dangerous journey. We will try to find new land, but we are willing to try. Yes, we are going on a dangerous journey on a ship called the Mayflower. But we are scared. We've never been on the ocean. So that's things that they're saying in the play. So they went off to find a new land, but it was bad. They got seasick, then one morning they spotted land. Hooray, hooray, now we can build our new homes. After going to shore, they found a good place to live. They called it Plymouth. They gave thanks to God for bringing them safely to the new land. Then they got to work building houses in their village. Finally, it was finished. Everyone had a home. Look, who is that coming into the village? It's a native bear coming to visit. All right, and then right here it says, in crawled little honey. Little honey is the sister of brother and sister bear. Greetings, my name is Squanto. Welcome, Squanto. We are glad to meet you. Squanto was friendly and helpful. He helped the pilgrim bears grow more food. He showed them how to plant corn. Without Squanto, they would have starved. Now, let's harvest our crops and have a Thanksgiving feast. That's a great idea. And so they did. Squanto came to the feast, too. The pilgrim bears all bowed their heads and gave thanks to God for leading them to this new land. They also gave thanks for their new friends, the native bears, and they, the help they were given. And then they ate and ate and ate. The end. All the grown-ups clapped and stamped and whistled. It was a big hit. Aunt Min wiped her eyes. They're so darling, she sniffed. Mama rang a bell in the doorway. Dinner time, she called. Yeah, cried the cubs as they ran for the dining room. But then sister stopped short. Oh no, she said. What about my turkey, Plymouth? I forgot all about him. What happened to Plymouth? Don't worry, sister, said Papa, leading her to the window. Plymouth is safe and sound. I decided that turkeys do make good pets after all. And there, in his own brand new pen in the bear's own backyard, was Plymouth. His tail was spread proudly, and he looked very pleased with himself. Oh, Plymouth, said sister, very happy. Welcome to your new home. The bear family all gathered round the dining table. Everything was just as Papa had imagined it. Two kinds of potatoes, stuffing and gravy, corn on the cob and corn muffins, green beans, pumpkin pies, whipped cream, and ice cream too. But in the center of the table, instead of a roast tur turkey, there was a magnificent honey-baked salmon. Mmm, said all the bears. Then it was time to say grace. The bear family had held hands and bowed their heads. Grizzly Gramps, as the eldest of the clan, said the prayer. Dear Lord, we give thanks for all our blessings, for all your blessings, for this great feast that you have provided, for the warm homes that give us shelter, for the love of our family that surrounds us today, and for all the beauties of the earth that you and your great love and wisdom have created. Amen. Amen, said everyone, picking up their knives and forks.
But Sister had something to add, and I am especially thankful for my wonderful new pet, Plymouth the turkey. Amen, said everyone said again, and they all laughed. Men, echoed Honey, as they dug into the delicious food like a family of hungry bears. I hope you guys like that kickoff to fall and Thanksgiving season. That was Give Thanks by the Berenstein Bears. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time on Read With Me, LG.